In the early 1990s, Sennar Products introduced their Steadicam Junior for home use. I had to have one. This is uh, test footage from the first time I tried it out. Would have been using a CCD TR81 for this shot. Steadicam Junior is a purely mechanical gimbal that was manufactured by Cinema Products, which is the same company that made the big Steadicam for motion pictures. Although this doesn't have the arm or the vest, it's for small cameras. It's made out of plastic and it's got counterweights on it as well as your, your gimbal for your, your uh, grip. And then the camera is perfectly balanced. And the, the trick to setting these things up is balancing the camera. You spend more time balancing the camera, getting it all set. And that's what made them kind of cumbersome to use because you couldn't just slap your camera on it and start using it. You had to put your camera on it. You had to set it up. You had to balance it. Get everything all set up for your shots. So you couldn't just throw it on the, on the Steadicam and run and gun and shoot. Now, you could use your camera without using Steadicam. You could fold it down and leave the camera attached, which is what most of us did. We used it on the Steadicam, with, you know, even attached it to our tripod, and leave it on the Steadicam so that we could disconnect from the tripod, open the Steadicam up and use it. But these are some of the shots. This is the first time I tried this out. This is using, again, a small CCD TR81. And I made the mistake of using a Sony metal evaporated tape. And you're going to see in a minute why I say I made a mistake. You are going to hear some squeaking sound and you're going to see banding in the picture. And that was actually the tape sticking to the drum while it was being recorded. God awful metal evaporated eight millimeter tape, at least the early stuff was bad. That's also how I know that this was on a CCD TR81 because the 81 used the smaller head drum, which was much more prone to sticking to that evaporated tape, which was very smooth. Didn't have the problem so much with the larger drum, but the smaller drum on the TRC or TR series cameras Oops. was. Uh, Trees have a tendency to throw the camera a little bit off balance. I hit a tree with it. Anyway, let's just wind. watch. Steadicam Junior was good for cameras up to about three pounds or a little over three pounds. I, there we go, there we go. That's the problem with evaporated tape. And you'd find out after you made your recording that, because you didn't hear it while it was making the recording, and you go to play your recordings back and all of a sudden it starts doing that. Yeah, that, that kind of sucks. Uh, anyway, uh, as I say, it was, it was good for small cameras up to about three, three and a half pounds. I did successfully put a CCD VX3 on and I used it and I'll be publishing that video shortly. I went and did a car show down at the PNE and I think it was 1990, I'm going to say 92 or 93 and it, it looked pretty good. It the wind again. Now this is what happens when, it, when the wind hits it, the thing is just going to get a mind of its own and just take off. So these were a great little unit but... Um, you were pretty limited as to what you could use them for just because, uh, well, they were unpredictable. Under perfect conditions, they work great, but get a bit of a wind and uh, the thing's going to take off like it's got a sail on it.
Modern three axis gimbals are so much better in this respect because, well, they'll hold the camera level under pretty much any operating conditions. Whereas these mechanical balance steady cams, all it took was a little bit of wind and they would start to sway back and forth or turn around. So basically, you're c controlling the camera with just two fingers. You're holding the, the mount, oh, head's clogging up fingernail to the rescue you're holding the grip in one hand typically your right hand or your strong arm and then your other hand you've just got two fingers on the control column and you can pan the camera back and forth or left and right and tilt it up and down with just two fingers and you barely touch it you know it's not like you're gripping this you're just very very lightly touching it and it takes just the slightest input to start it turning and it'll continue to turn until you stop it too much touch and <laughs> you'll cause it to rock and of course if any wind catches it it's going to rock or to start to turn so then you're kind of holding it you're fighting against the wind to hold it still and that's what causes it to start to sway like a pendulum great idea they work really well under good conditions that that is no wind and we're able to let you get incredible shots that you couldn't get otherwise <laughs> for anything else that was available at that time today these things aren't worth much they were quite expensive when they were sold uh, i think they were about 400 us dollars for this basically piece of plastic that you you put washers in the batteries the batteries made up part of your weight your counterweight and what, what what people don't realize is as batteries discharge their weight changes so you you would have the camera perfectly balanced with a new set of batteries but by the time the batteries were getting to the point where the little LCD screen was starting to go out because they the battery supplied power for the LCD screen well by the time that the batteries were depleted they had lost enough weight that you could rebalance the camera again and then when you put new batteries in you'd have to go through this whole process again but this is quite a bit of work when you're carrying around a camera that weighs three pounds and then this this uh steadicam junior which is probably another five pounds you're holding you know maybe eight or nine pounds in front of you it's a lot of work to carry this thing as i found out the first day i tried to use it going up and down stairs um, yeah, well, you get a good workout um, operating one of these. So I just kind of carried it around the park here a bit, played around with it just to kind of get a feel with, for how it would work for when I did put it into use. And I actually used it when I was doing weddings. I used to use it for the wedding, the photo shoot part to make it look, get really creative with it. I only used it a few times though because I found it was, it was more work than it was worth to, uh, to get the look. So I carried it with me and I used it for a couple shots and uh, that was about it. Anyway, I'm going to do another video here shortly. I got to edit it together. The car show, it was all shot with a steady cam. I did it for one of the, uh, the community TV stations and uh, they hired me to go out with my camera and shoot the car show. And I have the original tape. It's actually this same tape, just further up the tape, but it was shot on uh, CCD VX3 
three chip camera. There we go. Heads clogged again. Fingernail into the heads to clear it up. Anyway, I think that's done for this one because I'm heading back to my car. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this look at an old Steadicam Junior. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like. This is the piece of equipment that did that video you just saw. This is the Steadicam Junior in its folded down position. You put your camera on this platform and put a screw through the bottom. It had the various mounting points where you would fit your camera. To use it, you lifted it up like that and folded that in place and flipped out the screen. This is called the flying position. This has got that wonderful rubber that's going, the rubber grip that's all failing. Uh, had a switch down here to turn on and off the monitor and it had this little bubble level so you'd know when you were when you were level. Little uh, LCD screen, this is a green basically it's monochromatic but it looks green because you can see it in sunlight and this folded out like this and you could adjust the monitor for different angles for what you were doing with the camera. A couple batteries went in the in the front here two C batteries went in the front and two more batteries went in the back in this section as you can see there's some weights in here as well you had to put weights in and different cameras required different weights so it came with an entire set of weights you could put in and uh, there was I think there was more where were the other weights well there's some weights that went under the batteries in here as well I think if I remember correctly this is all turning to that gooey rubber as well this is the screw you put it in there so you didn't lose it this is what held the camera in place that was the the, the uh, mounting screw had a place that you could put it on a tripod so you could use it so so you didn't have to take it off the stand you could fold it down like that and put it on a tripod and then shoot that way you could have the camera all balanced ready to go and then when you wanted to go out and shoot with it you just opened it up and you're ready to go and you basically held the camera like this and of course with the camera on there that would bring the weight up so that it's level and you could trim it so you had all these adjustments here side to side and and fore aft trimming so typically what you would do is you would well to set it up to set it up you had a, there was a little stand that fit in the bottom here and you would put it on the edge of a table so you set it on the corner of a table now you had to have a table that you could fit under but you would sit it on a stand over the edge of a table and that would hold the bracket like this level that way you could adjust your fore aft so that the camera was level and you could adjust your side to side to make your camera level with it sitting in a controlled environment when you're out in the field if you wanted the camera to point down a bit you would adjust this one that way if you wanted the camera to go up a bit you'd bring it back this way and your side to side of course was just to keep your your camera level once you had that set up it would stay pretty much level and then you just carry the camera like this as you were shooting there was a little switch on the side here that you could flip up and down that would operate the pause but only on certain camcorders not sony jvc for example they had a pause uh, plug on the back that would either make or break so you could turn it on or turn it off i think panasonic as well but sony they didn't you had to push the button on the camera itself to start it and stop it uh, there was a little light that could plug into here as well a dc port and you plug the output from your camera into the video in on here you had a little cord that went from the output of the camera to the video in so you could see what you were doing on the screen there to control the camera this is what i'm talking about this control point and there's also a, a screw here if you push in you can adjust it up and down see one turn at a time there's a little lock button back here and that could raise it up or lower it so if you were too if you were too top heavy or too bottom heavy you would adjust this screw to balance the camera once your camera is balanced you're carrying it you're hanging on to the grip and you're just using two fingers right onto here 
and just touching this and this is how you're controlling it to tilt it up or down or to turn it left or right pretty simple when you think about it I also had this little they call this the whale's tail that way when you weren't using it as a steady cam you could actually set it up like this you put it in like that and you could put this up on your shoulder and use it grab it here and or, or put your hand through the grip on the camera but you could put it up on your shoulder flip your monitor up and then you could carry it around as a shoulder mount camera that's what they call that little piece called that the whale's tail so you could use it as a shoulder mount camera so say it was a lot of money this thing back in the day when you when you think of a camcorder most camcorders were you know in the thousand dollar or so range so thousand bucks for a camcorder and if you wanted a steady cam you paid another four hundred dollars us for this but they sold a gajillion of these it even says cinema products on here city cam junior manufactured under license under exclusive worldwide license from Garrett Brown cinema products Los Angeles anyway that's the original steady cam junior and all of your gimbals that you see today they're all based on this principle although now we aren't using cameras that or mounts that have a mechanical gimbal like this now everything is all three axis it's got motors that control it and servos and tilt sensors and accelerometers and they do a much better job they work in all kinds of different wind conditions they don't care they they keep the camera still but it all had to start somewhere and it started with this actually it didn't start with this it started with garrett brown's originally invent original invention the steady cam for big cameras and then this one came after but this is exactly the same works exactly the same as the big one thanks for watching